next talk, powerful and NP, powerful and NP complete hypergraph lambda grammars. So uh, the floor is for you now. Okay, one sec, I'll put the timer on. Okay, so thank you very much and thank the organizers for inviting me. Uh, well, this talk uh, is, uh, well, it has nothing in common with the category theory. Uh, it is uh, concerned with combining two approaches. Well, the first one is the Lambda calculus, which is a part of mathematical logic, which is a logical formalism, and uh, uh, hyper -H replacement grammars, uh, which belong to the Grubb grammar theory. And well, I'll start with uh, uh, some very, very basic uh, notions because I have to explain, uh, well, first of all, the Lambda calculus and uh, the ideas behind its generalization to hypergraphs. Uh, well, I'll start with an example of a simple context-free grammar, which will be used later. So I suppose everybody knows that context-free grammars generate string formal languages. For instance, this one, uh, well, it has the start symbol S and the following productions. Uh, they, uh, and well, uh, given a context-free grammar, one can derive uh, a string of terminal symbols. Namely, we start with the start symbol and apply productions in some order. And if we obtain a string con containing only terminal symbols, then we succeed and this string is said to be generated by this grammar. Uh, well, uh, there are other kinds of formal grammars. Uh, uh, for example, this one, it is called basic categorical grammars. Uh, well, categorical grammars, in particular these ones, uh, work uh, as follows. They assign types to symbols and then check whether a sequence of types is correct with respect to some uniform laws. Well, in this case, types are either primitive, just some atomic objects, or they are built from primitive ones using two operations, the right division and the left one. Uh, okay. Uh, and well, there are two uniform rules, as I said, uh, which regulate how types interact with each other within a sequence of types. They are very simple. They can be called reduction laws because they just say that given A division B and B, uh, they can be reduced to A in this order and in this one. Mm, well, a basic categorical grammar then contains an alphabet a correspondence between symbols of an alphabet of the alphabet and types. So this correspondence assigns one or several types to each symbol. And finally, uh, a basic categorical grammar includes a distinguished type S. Uh, and well, we say that a string is accepted by a basic categorical grammar if there is a way of replacing each symbol in this string by a correspondent type with respect to this triangle relation. Uh, after that, we obtain a, sequen a sequence of types. And uh, well, if it can be reduced to the distinguished type S, then we succeed. And the string is accepted. Otherwise, it is not accepted. Uh, well, this is how basic categorical grammars work. Uh, uh, it is known that context-free grammars can be converted into basic categorical grammars. Uh, according to the following two-step procedure. First of all, we uh, convert a context-free grammar into an equivalent one in the lexicalized normal form, uh, which says that there is exactly one terminal symbol in the right-hand side of each production. I'll show, uh, well, an example of such a grammar was given at the first slide. And the second step, uh, well, given such a grammar in this normal form, we can uh, convert it uh, into a basic categorical grammar uh, according to some natural procedure I'll show below. Uh, well, uh, how to perform this second step? Uh, let us consider the grammar from the first example. Uh, given this production, uh, informally, we just divide uh, both its size by Q. So we put it uh, to the left under the denominator 
and well we choose that uh, the direction of the division is the right one because here q stands to the right of a so we say that this production is converted into the correspondence a corresponds to s right division q similarly here uh, however the direction of the division is different uh, well mm, uh, moreover this conversion uh, even preserves uh, well, the structure of derivations, namely, uh, in the context-free case, we derived the string a a b b as follows. We applied this rule, then this one, then again the first one and the third one. Uh, well, when uh, in the categorical case we replace symbols by corresponding types as follows, and then we start reducing, uh, and well, we start with these. Uh, two types then here and here. This is an inverted derivation in the context free grammar. Uh, well, moreover, uh, the underlying philosophy of productions and correspondences is the same. Uh, namely, when we consider such a production, it can be understood as follows. A string of the type S can be obtained by concatenation of a symbol A and a string of the type Q. So uh, this is what this production does. Uh, on the uh, on contrary, uh, when we say that A corresponds to S right division Q, uh, we informally mean that A is such a symbol that whenever a string of the type Q appears to its right, they together form a string of the type S. Uh, well, of course, these two statements are equivalent. Uh, so for now, this is only juggling symbols. This may be considered as juggling symbols. As juggling symbols. Uh, okay. Well, the uh, first step is to generalize the uh, above conversion procedure. Uh, so first of all, notice that there are left and right divisions and uh, these directions are related to uh, the nature of strings we work with. Uh, so I'd like to get rid of them. Uh, well, let us change uh, annotation a bit. Uh, given the production S to AQ, we won't write uh, this correspondence, but we will do the following. We will extract A from the right-hand side and put some special mark instead of it. We denote this by dollar. And then we write that A corresponds to S divided by dollar Q. On contrary, uh, converging, uh, well, when converting this production into a correspondence, we extract B and put dollar at the second position. Uh, therefore, the difference between right and left divisions is now expressed by the position of the dollar mark. Well, for now, this is completely formal. This is symbolic uh, and uh, yet meaningless. Uh, so this formal procedure can be uh, done in more general cases, of course. Uh, for instance, if we have the following production with exactly one terminal symbol in the right-hand side, then we extract it and say that A corresponds to S divided by, well, B, C, dollar, D, E. And, uh, well, we can do this even in more general cases. For instance, if we have a hypergraph production, uh, well, this hypergraph production also has exactly one terminal label in the right-hand side. Uh, and uh, therefore we can extract it and convert this production into the following correspondence. Uh, and well, this is, the, uh, <laughs> this is the main idea which allows one to uh, go from hyper HG placement grammars, I'll talk about a bit later. Uh, well, this procedure allows one to convert a hyper HG placement grammar into uh, some new uh, hypergraph categorical grammar I'm going to introduce. Uh, so two words about the hypergraph formalism I work with. Uh, well, in my work, hypergraphs, of course, include nodes, hyperedges. Hyperedges are attached to nodes in some fixed order, so the uh, hypergraphs are directed. Uh, well, uh, attachment nodes must be distinct hyper edges are labeled and finally uh, there is an ordered sequence of distinct external nodes 
well, the most important graph transformation used uh, in the work uh, is hyperedge replacement. Well, uh, it explains how a hyperedge in a hypergraph, well, say H, can be replaced by another hypergraph, say G. Well, it is very natural. We just remove a hyperedge, add a new hypergraph, and uh, merge its external nodes with attachment nodes of the edge removed. Uh, well, and finally, we can define the notion of a hyperedge replacement grammar, which is very close to that of context-free grammar, as you know, I suppose. Uh, so for now, this uh, procedure was completely formal, completely symbolic. Uh, in order to, uh, well, make it meaningful, uh, functional, we need uh, to generalize the reduction laws we introduced for strings. Uh, and well, uh, we did this at uh, well, in our work, which was presented at ICGT 2020, which was called Hypergraph Basic Categorial Grammars. Uh, so uh, this formalism introduced last year uh, was an appropriate, well, is an appropriate generalization of basic categorial grammars. Uh, and uh, well, Hypergraph Basic Categorial Grammars inherit many properties of uh, just basic categorial grammars. In particular, in the string case, BCGs uh, generate exactly the class of context-free languages. Well, with some exceptions, namely there has to be no empty word. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, one uh, can consider basic categorial grammars as an equivalent formalism to context-free grammars. Uh, in the hypergraph, case, things are totally same. Uh, well, hypergraph BCGs uh, generate exactly the class of languages generated by hyperedge replacement grammars. Well, with uh, some non-substantial exceptions related to the issue of isolated nodes. And therefore, hypergraph BCGs are equivalent uh, in the sense of generating power to hyperedge replacement grammars. And well, uh, regarding hypergraph BCGs, nothing was really interesting because all the proofs, all the notions were quite standard. The most substantial part was this conversion procedure. Uh, very well. Uh, however, our main goal um, was more ambitious. It was to generalize the Lambda calculus to hypergraphs. What is the Lambda calculus? Uh, it is a logical formalism which also uh, has types, it also has sequence, and uh, the most importantly, and what is the most important, uh, it uh, derives sequence using axioms and rules, as for instance, intuitionistic logic or classical logic. Uh, well, in the Lambda calculus, types are built from primitive ones using uh, the left division, the right division, and the product. Mm. Uh, the notion of a sequent is the following. A sequent is uh, the structure of the form A1, A2, AN. This is a sequence of types. Uh, two, just a formal symbol, B, where B is a type. Well, and uh, uh, there is one axiom and six rules which regulate which sequence are derivable. I won't go through the rules uh, because uh, there is no need to do this now. Uh, well, uh, the main idea is that we must start from axioms uh, and then we apply rules, for instance, given a sequence of the form pi to a, where pi is some sequence of types, and the sequence gamma b delta to c, we can combine them into a new one, uh, which has the following form. Uh, so these rules explain how to um, introduce a type with each operation in each side of a sequence, so in the left-hand side or in the right-hand side. Uh, so, well, this is just some logical formalism uh, which operates on strings. Uh, these are extended reduction laws, so if uh, we replace pi by a, then this will be an axiom, and here we will have uh, exactly reducing a, a left division b, and b in the premise. 
So we say that the sequence is derivable if it can be obtained from axioms using rules, as in any logic. Uh, this is an example. I'll not, I, I'm not going to go through it. Uh, very well. Uh, the Lambda calculus uh, can also be used uh, as the basis for categorical grammars. Uh, those are called Lambda categorical grammars. They extend basic categorical grammars well because we have now three operations instead of two and they work in a more general way. Uh, however, the main principles are the same. Uh, however, uh, the only and the most important difference is that instead of applying reduction laws, we uh, construct a sequence from a string of symbols and try to derive it. So uh, what was the main goal of this study? We uh, aimed to extend the Lambda calculus and its grammars to hypergraphs uh, in such a way that uh, the resulting formalisms would generalize both the Lambda calculus and uh, hypergraph BCGs we studied earlier. And well, uh, the uh, well, this uh, goal was reached. Uh, we succeeded to define hypergraph types. Well, a part of this definition can be seen from uh, the examples presented earlier when we introduced uh, types with a new division. Uh, well, it is denoted by this division sign. And there is also a an operation which is called a generalized product. So uh, secondly, we introduced uh, the calculus itself. Well, it has one axiom and four rules uh, that regulate what hypergraph sequence are derivable. And uh, finally, we generalized the definition of Lambda categorical grammars to hypergraphs and thus obtained some uh, new kind of graph grammars which is opposed to hyperish replacement grammars. Well, uh, this is the axiom of the hypergraph Lambda calculus and those are four rules. Uh, I won't go through them. Uh, moreover, many, uh, well, uh, notation used here is not explained on this slide because uh, I actually have no time to thoroughly introduce uh, the hypergraph Lambda calculus. So I won't do uh, this now uh, and I'll refer uh, listeners to the paper. Uh, however, note uh, just uh, two words uh, about this rule. This rule is an extended reduction law uh, which exploits hypergraphs now. Uh, another remark is that all uh, the rules are defined through hyperedge replacement, which is important. Okay, so uh, first of all, we showed that the Lambda calculus uh, can be embedded in its hypergraph counterpart using string graphs, which is uh, quite natural. And of course, we expected that the Lambda calculus must, uh, well, uh, it must be possible to embed the Lambda calculus into the hypergraph Lambda calculus. Uh, the embedding function uh, works uh, uh, as follows. Uh, well, given, for instance, a type with the right division, we translate it as follows. We translate uh, A, and then we divide it by a string graph, which has the dollar mark on the first place, and uh, the translation of B at the second place. Uh, this... Uh, looks similar to what we've done before when we uh, put a dollar in the denominator uh, while converting productions of a context-free grammar into uh, correspondences. Uh, similarly, uh, when, when translating a type with the left division, we uh, do a similar thing, but dollar now stands uh, at the second position. And well, uh, we also uh, translate string sequence to graph sequence uh, using string graphs. Uh, yes, I know that I have not uh, introduced any formal definitions. So uh, now I just consider some graph constructions uh, 
without explaining how they actually work, but uh, I'm just trying to uh, well explain uh, some basic ideas uh, of this translation. Uh, and finally, well, uh, the following theorem can be proved. Uh, a sequent is derivable in the Lambda calculus if and only if its hypergraph translation is derivable in the hypergraph calculus. Uh, besides, a nice uh, feature uh, we discovered is that several modifications of the Lambda calculus, uh, which are introduced in different works and, uh, well, that at first glance seem different, can be naturally embedded in the hypergraph Lambda calculus using some natural graph constructions. Uh, secondly, uh, we uh, studied properties of uh, grammars based on the hypergraph Lambda calculus. As I said, uh, this hypergraph formalism uh, allows us to introduce uh, hypergraph Lambda categorial grammars, or in short, HL grammars. Uh, what do we know about them for now? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we showed that hyper -H replacement grammars in the lexicalized normal form can be modeled by HL grammars. Uh, last year at GCM 2020, we proved that uh, almost uh, any hyper -H replacement grammar can be converted into an equivalent one in the lexicalized normal form. Well, there are also uh, exceptions related to the issue of isolated nodes, but we disregard them. Uh, therefore, uh, HL grammars are not weaker than hyper H replacement grammars. Uh, secondly, the membership problem for HL grammars isn't P complete. Uh, well, as well for hyper H replacement grammars. So they are equal in algorithmic complexity. Uh, well, and finally, we studied uh, possibilities of HL grammars and we discovered that they are quite powerful. Uh, namely, we studied that there is a way of modeling intersection of formal hypergraph languages in the hypergraph Lambda calculus. Well, uh, as I said, uh, well, as I showed on the slide, the product uh, is modeled in the hypergraph Lambda calculus using uh, this standard string graph, uh, here A and B go in the linear order. Uh, it appears that the following construction uh, of the Lambda calculus is of importance. Uh, well, this uh, type where A and B go in parallel. Uh, this is called an Ozets conjunction, and it is called a conjunction because it allows uh, one to model intersections of languages uh, well generated by hyper H replacement grammars. So we proved the following theorem, which is the main result of the paper. Uh, if uh, there are hyper H replacement grammars uh, generating isolated node bounded languages, uh, this standard excuse, then there is uh, an HL grammar that generates their, uh, the intersection of languages generated by these grammars. Uh, this theorem has uh, many nice consequences. First of all, HL grammars are more powerful than HRGs because the latter generate the class of languages uh, which is not closed under intersection. Secondly, languages generated by HL grammars violate the Pumpin lemma, the Parikh theorem, and the linear growth theorem. Uh, well, an example of a language uh, violating all three uh, statements is the language of string graphs, which have uh, the length two and square. Well, uh, actually there is a way uh, to generate an exponentially growing language using HL grammars. Uh, so now I conclude. Uh, first of all, uh, the hypergraph Lambda calculus uh, is a logic of interest because uh, it allows one to uh, consider different logics uh, extending and modifying the Lambda calculus as parts of something uh, general. Uh, and this allows uh, at least uh, me to look at them from a bird's eye view and give some new insights. Uh, secondly, regarding grammars, 
well, uh, all the above mentioned uh, results uh, uh, allow me to say that HL grammars represent an attractive alternative to HRGs, uh, well, because they are equal in complexity, but these are for, uh, more powerful than HRGs. Well, there are some open questions. Uh, there are many more of them than on the slide. Uh, in particular, I am interested in whether the set of languages uh, generated by HL grammars is closed under intersection. The theorem I showed gives us a hope that this could be true. Uh, it would be interesting to find some non-trivial upper bounds for this class of languages and uh, to find some uh, substantial polynomial class of HL grammars. Well, I hope uh, uh, I <laughs> uh, introduced uh, some basic ideas. Uh, thank you for attention.